Hey, my name is Chris Roth, the professional prospector, and today we're gonna to talk about the secrets of fine gold recovery. Now, hey, there's a lot more fine gold out there than there is coarse big nuggets. And so, you know, people wanna go after fine gold for good reason, because like I say, a lot more of it out there. But recovering fine gold is a lot more difficult than recovering big coarse nuggets. Hey, big coarse nuggets, it's hard to lose those once you get them into your pan or your sluice box, into your hand, whatever. So let's take a look at the secrets of fine gold recovery. So come along with me and we'll take a look at those secrets of fine gold recovery. Now I'm gonna tell you that the big secret is not gonna be some super duper, you know, amazing new mat material to put in the bottom of your sluice box. Here's my sluice box right here. This is an ancient keen. It literally, I've owned this since the late 70s, and I've used it every year since. And all I've done to this is I replaced the original indoor-outdoor carpet with miner's moss. Now, there's a lot of people that'll tell you those mats are just amazing and how great they do. Well, I'll tell you something. I could take any mat on the market and make it do really well, or I can make it do incredibly poorly. It's not the mat, it's how you run your sluice. So I'm gonna show you the secrets of fine gold recovery and I want you to come along with me because we're gonna go into it in depth and we're gonna take a look at me running this sluice as a recirculating a sluice, kind of like a high banker, only we're just gonna do it here in the backyard. And uh, I'm gonna go over all the things you need to know to run a sluice properly so that you can get the best fine gold recovery that's possible. And like I say, you know, there's a lot of mattings out there. They're, they're good. I mean, I'm not saying that the mattings are bad, but the truth is every guy who's selling a matting is gonna tell you his matting is amazing. And the other guy's matting, his competitor, his, those mattings, they stink. Well, that's, you know, just salesman talk, right? What the truth is, like I say, I could do good or bad with any matting you find on the market. I can make it work, I can make it not work. So all I'm using is just your basic miner's moss. This is a standard that's been around for decades and decades. It's actually been scientifically tested and shown to do a good job on recovering fine gold. And I'm gonna take you in with me. We're gonna set up this thing, like I say, as a recirculating sluice box. I'm gonna show you how I do that. And we're gonna recover some real fine gold from some ores, from some hard rock ores, from some black sand that I have, and from some other things that I'm gonna show you that I think you'll be interested. So come along with me for this video. We're gonna examine in detail the secrets of fine gold recovery. Well, I showed you my sluice box and what I use for that. And then I wanna show you how I turn my just regular old sluice box that you can buy lots of different versions of it. Like I say, mine's a keen, but there's a lot of good ones out there. I'm gonna show you how I turn mine into a recirculating sluice box. All I have is just a, a bit of aluminum uh, sheet metal here. And I took my vise and some angle iron and a hammer and I bent it into a shape. Literally, you know, it's just a little thing. The Y of the sluice box fits like this and uh, you've got a hose connection that goes to a pump, you've got a valve to turn it off and on or adjust the flow up and down and a, a pipe bar across here that's got, I don't know if you can probably you can't see it, but it's got holes drilled in it all along it, pointing down. I actually have two, a uh, splash guard that fits over the top of this to help minimize what water goes flying out of the sluice box. I wanna try and keep in my recirculating sluice as much of the water as possible. So there's a splash guard that covers over here because when the water comes out of the holes on the bottom of this, uh, pipe, it, the water tends to come down pretty fast and splash up out, so you wanna keep the water in the sluice box. But other than that, you can see it's just a simple thing. There's nothing really especially complex about it. Uh, a little bit of aluminum, um, a little bit of bending, and a little bit of planning, and a little bit of spray paint, and gluing the pipe together, drilling holes in it, 
it's something that anybody could do. So I just wanted to show you this because I know it's something that you could do at home. Because I did it at home. So before we get started processing the rock, I just wanted to give you a little quick tour and show you my setup here. I've got my sluice box set up. I've got the, uh, the manifold for the water pump right here. Um, there's a couple of pieces of copper there just to direct around the water flow. And then I've got a bit of fine gold uh, recovery mat here, a little just a knife edge adapter, and then my uh, sluice with the miner's moss in it. Nothing fancy, nothing amazing, but I wanted to show you how it's set up. Well, I've got uh, jet dry in the water. I've added jet dry to the water, so it'll help suppress any floating sulfides or gold that are in the ore. And I just wanted to show you how it's set up before we actually run it. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the water on and you can see how it's set up and see how the water flow is. So here's what I want you to see, that the water flow is smooth, that I don't have a lot of turbulence or flow down here, that the water is flowing evenly down, and that is what is telling you that you're gonna be able to get good gold recovery. And this mat, I go ahead and take out any bubbles. That's another thing, in a lot of the mats, they have a tendency to have bubbles, and so it's good to take the bubbles out of them. But anyway, this is showing you what my setup is and how it works. Now, perhaps the most common question about this is what angle am I gonna set it up at? See, I've got this piece of wood here, and these things are adjustable too, so I can set it at whatever angle I want, but literally the angle I'm gonna choose, and I'll demonstrate this to you in a minute, is an angle that takes the material down at a reasonable rate of speed. So basically what you want to set it up, the steeper angle you get, the faster things are going to move. Um, if you set it up flat, they're not going to hardly move anywhere at all. So you want a moderate angle that takes the material through at a reasonable rate of speed. You don't want to put a bit of material up in here and have it go whoosh right down there. That's too fast. You don't want to have it here and you put some material here and it just sits here and slowly, a little bit at a time, starts moving down the sluice. That's too slow. So if you can get it there, you put it in, it slowly moves on down and goes through there. That's a reasonable rate of speed and that's really the critical key in getting the angle and the flow set up right. Sometimes people will tell you stuff like, oh, you know, one inch per foot or two inches per foot. Well, it depends on what your water flow is. If your water flow is fast enough, you know, you want it slower because it basically the speed that the material moves down is a combination of the amount of water flow and the angle that it's at. So a small water flow, you'll need a steeper angle. A big water flow, you'll want it really toward the flat end of things. And that's how you adjust the sluice box to get the maximum fine gold recovery. It's gonna be something where you have uh, a smooth flow because turbulence is the enemy of fine gold recovery. If I've seen people run sluice boxes and it just shoots down, it looks like a river at you know white water uh, conditions, and that's not what you want to achieve. You want to achieve a smooth, even flow you can't really get zero turbulence, but you wanna minimize the amount of turbulence that you have because the, the minimum amount of turbulence is gonna give you the best fine gold recovery. Another important thing about how you set the sluice box up is the material that you're running. You know, if you wanna get the best fine gold recovery, you want your material screened to small sizes. Um, you can put in bigger rocks and ha if you have a flow to get, you know, if you had a flow that would blow, um, you know, a cantaloupe sized rock through this sluice box, sorry, that level of flow is going to get the fine gold just blown right through. Um, it, it, you got to see that as, as you're moving stuff with the water, 
and the speed that you have of the water and the angle that it, it, it if you have just fine material you can have the angle slower to handle the fine material more slowly but if you're going to, the bigger the material you're going to have in there the steeper it's got to be and and so when you're going for fine gold recovery another important secret is you need to screen the material uh, if you're doing gravels now today i've got four different lots of material that i'm going to be running and i'm going to show you each one three of them had to do with hard rock mines one is some black sand that i've accumulated and what we're going to do is we'll run it through here but all of those things the the material that's the uh, even the material that's the coarsest, which is one of the hard rock stuff, one of the hard rock lots that I have is actually just some material screened out of a hard rock dump. It's not actually ore that's been crushed. It's just the, a small dump that was specially uh, set aside and it looks pretty good and I, I've tested it. I know it's got decent gold in it, uh, but I didn't crush it. I literally just took the material, screened it to minus a quarter inch and we're going to run that through here so you're going to see each of these i'm going to talk about each of the lots the the coarsest one is that stuff that came right through the dump right from the dump and it has stuff that's a little bit smaller than it's small enough that quarter inch screen it would pass through so remember those three points that you want minimum turbulence you want to screen the material to small size and you want the angle and flow at a combination that it moves moderately through the box not too fast and not too slow where it's hardly moving it's just a moderate speed minimum turbulation and screen the material to a small size that's going to get you the very best fine gold recovery let's consider some other secrets of fine gold recovery another one is what they call a slick plate and Although this is really too short to be a good slick plate, I will add the material up at the top and you have a, a flat plate basically that allows the material to start moving and basically the, the lighter material to move on forward and the gold to work its way down. So that by the time the gold gets to the riffles here, the gold will be on the bottom of the plate. It will be right at the bottom and then as it works into the riffles it'll have the best chance of getting caught another feature of this um, is that we have low riffles this is a very just small ribbed uh, mat to sh show the gold as it gets caught as it's coming in um, and then we have the miners moss and even the riffles here are very low the coarser the material you're really going after the taller the riffles you can have uh, my old dredge used to have, you know, riffles that were an inch tall. But you can see this is, is just even the highest part of the rib, uh, the highest part of the ridge of the, the riffle is only maybe a quarter inch above. And even that is more than plenty. If you look at some of the, the super duper mats that people produce for recovering fine gold, you'll see that those mats are set up with a um, very low profile that's an, a, another typical thing now i'm using miner's moss and one of the things that you have to have for whatever material that you're using to process the gold is it has to have some capacity to store concentrates and that was one of the weaknesses of the old indoor outdoor carpet that used to be in in this sluice box and the indoor outdoor carpet uh, i mean yeah gold could you know settle down to the to right on the surface of it and the, the riffles and everything pressed down close against it but the uh, they really didn't have any storage capacity for uh, heavier materials to get caught and work their way out of the flow of the water this you know I have the uh, expanded metal the very fine expanded metal those things you know act like a riffle and it's many only a sixteenth of an inch but underneath that I have miner's moss, which is actually something that has a, a maximum capacity to store uh, concentrates as you're running the sluice and allow the heavier materials to get out of the flow of the water. That's one of the important things about this setup. So now that you've seen this and, and I give you a full explanation of my setup here, 
Uh, I want to go ahead and start running the material and we'll run each lot individually and do a cleanup after each one. Uh, you know, I'm not going to have you stand here while I feed in every little bit of material. Um, one of the things too about feeding material for recovery of fine gold, you don't want to dump in too much at once. A little bit at a time consistently feeding through is, is one of the other keys to getting the best fine gold recovery. Consistently feeding small amounts through rather than dump, you know, I could dump a half a bucket in here and eh, eventually it all worked through. But what I want is just a small amount, a little bit at a time. And I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna show you while I'm um, processing the material and then I'll show you the results. Basically what I'll end up with is um, the riffles with the material loaded into the miner's moss and I'll do a cleanup after each of my four lots of material and I'll explain each lot and where it came not exactly where it came from but what type of material it is uh, so that you can understand what I'm running while we make ourselves some gold. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started and one of the things that I do with each of my uh, materials is I pre-wet them with water that has some jet dry in it and that will allow them to be fully wetted when I put them into the sluice box. Let's get started running the black sand. I'm going to start adding a scoop or two at a time, slowly, evenly, and I'm going to be able to get my best fine gold recovery that way. Watch me do it. You can see the material is moving through, not super fast, but it's moving through at a moderate speed. That's exactly what we want. Okay, I know you don't want to just stand here and watch me feed this material, so let me skip to the end when we've got our concentrates in hand. I don't know if you can see it, but there's some really fine gold in that uh, little catching mat between the riffles. And uh, some fine gold just all the way down here. A few little bits of, of flakes as well here in the riffles. and. Uh, I'm sure this did really well. I'll be cleaning it up in just a minute. And here's the fine gold I recovered. I actually was real happy with this. This is almost two grams of real small gold from black sand that I'd already processed through the blue bowl and thought that I'd pretty much gotten everything out of, but it's a nice amount. So my next lot of material that I'm gonna be processing is some hard rock ore that I crushed a little more than a year ago. I read an old report that showed, uh, listed uh, and described a small hard rock mine that was operated around the turn of the century in the early 1900s that uh, had some pretty decent grade ore. It said that the, the ore that they took from the mine panned real well. And so, and I checked and it wasn't claimed. There was no claim on it. So I thought I'd go over there and check it out and I drove as close as I could and hiked the rest of the way to this little obscure mine. And when I got there, well, there just wasn't very much ore on the mine dump or in the, around the mine. The uh, working was a, a real deep shaft, at least 100 feet deep. And, you know, it just wasn't a lot there for me to be interested in, but, I uh, thought I'd collect some samples of the ore and uh, maybe crush it and run it sometime in the future just to see how it came out. So that's what this is and I'm going to run it right now. Okay, let's get started.
Okay, well I'm gonna run this and I'll get back to you when I'm done to show you the results. So this is what I got from processing that lot of ore. It wasn't very much, but it had a lot of sulfites in it. There's probably not more than 10 pounds of raw rock. Anyway, um, you can see the dark colored material. It's not black sand. That's actually ground up pyrite. It just looks that way. And uh, there is some small amount of very fine gold in it, but I decided rather than trying to go through the work of extracting every little bit of fine gold in there, that I would go ahead and set this lot of sulfides aside because I've got a video coming up where I'm going to take uh, some sulfide, some pyrite, and extract the gold from it and show you how that's done. And I want to have some material to do that with, and I, I'm saving up until I get about a kilo, about a thousand grams of material to run. So this will go into that lot and we'll extract the gold at a future time. Hey, we're back and uh, today I'm going to be processing a bit of ore from Silver City, Nevada. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with that area, Silver City is up there by Virginia City. And it's funny because the name is Silver City, and of course Virginia City is well known for its silver deposits, but actually at Virginia City and the whole Virginia City area, the amount of gold and the amount of silver produced, the value of the two, way more ounces of silver of course, but the value of the two was pretty close. And actually it was close to 50-50. And some parts of the area, there actually was a lot more value in the gold than there was in the silver. And it actually is that Silver City is one of the areas where really the value was chiefly in the gold. The ore is basically a quartz material. It comes in uh, small to moderate sized veins and uh, the quartz has bits of pyrite, some of which is a lot of times rusted and uh, turned to limonite. But that's what the ore looks like and it has little bits of free gold in it. And so that's what we're gonna be crushing today and I'm gonna get started with that right now. Okay, I'm using the same setup that I was before and I'll just be adding little bits into the, the sluice box and running it. This is basically the same procedure I was using before. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring you back in when I've got this lot done. Again, this lot of Silver City ore resulted in a mass of sulfides, pretty much like I got before. It had a little bit of free gold, but not a lot. And so I've saved it for processing at a later date. It just goes to show that some of the samples that you take don't always pan out to be what you want them to be. I was real happy with the gold from the black sand anyway. Now for the next lot. We're gonna get started on our fourth lot of material. I'll show it to you here. You can see it's got a lot of iron in it. It's a material that's called a gossin and it literally comes from the oxidation of pyrite. It's literally pyrite that's been turned into rust. And, and by the, just the force of water and, and oxygen in the air, it's converted the pyrite, which is an iron sulfide, into an oxide, which is a, a combination of iron and oxygen. But this comes from a, a known gold deposit, and I know there's gold in here, so unlike the sample that I did yesterday, we're gonna be able to process this and get some decent gold out of it. So let me get going with it, and I'll show you. Okay, well, we've got it going, and I'm gonna start adding the next lot of material. You can really see the rust coming through. This will take a while, so let me get back with you. I did get a little bit of gold from this material, although not nearly as much as I got out of the black sand. At least there was one little picker in it too. So let's finish up and summarize this discussion about the secrets of collecting and recovering fine gold. 
All right. Now we talked about sluices and one of the most important things really is to set the angle and the water flow to minimize turbulence and to, um, to have a, a, a reasonable speed. I talked about how you don't want to put material in at the top of your sluice and have it go zip right through there. You don't want to put in material in at the top of your sluice and have it move super slowly so that, you know, it takes forever to go through. Either one of those is bad. You want it to move through at a reasonable speed where it's actually moving on through. And, and that goes with turbulence. If you have it too fast, then you have white water and all kinds of turbulence. And turbulence is the enemy of good fine gold recovery. So setting the angle and flow of your sluice system, whatever it is, um, it's a big deal and very important. Okay, putting in a wetting agent like Jet Dry, uh, both gold and sulfides, have a tendency to float. It's because they're water repellent. If you put water on sulfides, it just beads up like there's oil. Oil is also water repellent. And when it beads up like that, it, little tiny pieces of both sulfides and gold will have a tendency to float on the surface tension of the water. I actually did another video where I talked about that. I'll put a link for it in the uh, bottom. Um, having a slick plate. Basically, an area where the material can start to move and gold can work its way down to the bottom so that by the time it gets to any riffles or other collection system in your sluice that it's been able to work its way down to the bottom and it's not in the middle of a lot of other material. That's what slick plates are for. Having a matting with capacity to hold a significant amount of concentrates. That's important. Now I know, and I've said this before in the video, there's all kinds of people claiming amazing stuff with their super duper matting. And as I've said, I can get matting to do good or do poorly, depending mostly on the angle and flow, minimizing turbulence and having the material move through at a reasonable speed. That's the real key, okay? More than some magic matting. So, you also want a matting that has the capacity to hold some concentrates. Some types of matting, like some of the shallow ribbed matting, just doesn't have a lot of capacity to hold much. And that's why I like Miner's Moss, but there's other good stuff. I'm not saying Miner's Moss is the one and only. I'm just saying that it's something that definitely has capacity to hold concentrates, uh, you know, to accumulate material as it goes through. Um, even input of material. That's another one. You don't want to just dump in a whole bunch of material all at once and then wait while the water washes it away. That's just not the way things should be. Even input, a little bit of time on a continuous basis, gives you the best coverage on all the riffles and gives you the best recovery. So that's another point that's important. Screen the material to small size. I've mentioned this and that's important too. And that is, you don't want to put in coarse stuff and fine stuff together all in one material, shooting down your sluice box. You want to screen the material to small sizes. Uh, generally speaking, if you're looking for good, fine recovery, you really need to be less than quarter inch, probably be better less than an eighth of an inch. And sometimes really you'd be better off with something like 20 or 30 mesh if you're really looking for the best fine gold recovery. So screening your material, fine gold recovery, it's important. And then pre-wet the material. I've seen a lot of guys in various videos, they take totally dry material and just dump it into their sluice. And what happens is, like I told you, you got that issue with stuff floating and it goes right down the sluice and out into the tailings. And so you're losing values by doing that. If you want to get the best values, you really need to pre-wet the material. So a couple of things I definitely want to emphasize as well is that some is not all. That's is my little notes here. That if you get some fine gold in your processing, that doesn't mean you've gotten it all. Not by any means. It's very possible to get a 10% recovery and flush 90% of it away or 20% recovery and get and flush 90 or 80% of it away. It, there's a whole range of getting anywhere from just a little to pretty much all. And 
just because you get some, it doesn't mean you're getting the vast majority of it. You can't just assume that. And a lot of guys do that and it's just wrong. Uh, test and adjust. That's kind of the answer. Test your tailings. Run your tailings through a second time. See what you get. You know, if you're getting good gold the second time running through, you need to adjust or do something to fix your system. And like I say, I'm, I'm going to finish with that mats are not magic, okay? It's how you run your system is going to determine whether you get good fine gold recovery or crummy fine gold recovery. And those are the secrets of fine gold recovery. And I hope you've enjoyed the video. Now, if you want to learn to be a better prospector and find more gold for yourself, I wrote a book about that. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about my book right now. So let me tell you a little bit more about my book. Um, it's called Fistful of Gold, and I wrote it because I want you to be able to go out and find for yourself Fistful of Gold. And uh, you can see that it's a, an encyclopedia with all kinds of information, pictures, and that sort of thing. It's not in color, but uh, uh, color would have cost me a lot more to have printed, and so the book would have cost a lot more. It's for sale on Amazon, and you can pick it up. I'll put a link in the description below. I also serve as the editor for a, a prospecting magazine. It's ICMJ's Prospecting and Mining Journal. And honestly, you should check that out. We've got stories uh, and information, legal stuff, everything you know to increase your skills as a prospector. I write articles in this every month, and a lot of other very experienced prospectors contribute to the magazine as well. So check the magazine out. Also, I have a website, and the website is uh, at nevadaoutbackgems.com. I'll put a link for it in the description below. But there's gobs of information there that you will find useful in your prospecting efforts. Finally, I want to say that I really appreciate your comments and thoughts and even a positive criticism. Don't come on there and just toss out insults because I'll just delete your comments. But if you've got uh, helpful things to say and questions to ask, do write and, and put those in the comments because I answer my comments to people and uh, you'll hear from me in, in, you know, in, in responding to you. Uh, so if you've enjoyed this video and you like what you see and you're interested in uh, finding out more, well then sign up, subscribe, and hit the, uh, the notification bell so they'll let you know when I post new videos. And, you know, like it and share it if, again, you, you see stuff that you really are excited about. And I'll be coming out with lots more new videos. And so we'll see you again real soon.